Okay, hello, welcome to the video. Uh, this is another foundation video, I think episode 8, I think. Gosh, I've made a lot of these, haven't I? Here I am flicking through my book and this is the storyboard I've used to help me with each page of my book when I planned it out at the very beginning stages and would you look at that, I'm on the last page, page 25 baby. It's uh, quite a nice feeling to finally be working on the last page. So like always, like with every single page I do, I start off with thumbnails to try out different compositions and ideas to figure out what I want to do for the actual page. Um, I'll show you the work I did last week because I didn't film any of last week, so here you go. These are the thumbnails which I did for the page I did last week, and then this is the nicer sketch for it. And it's the page showing being a bug, finally getting home, because if you've been following all these videos and the story of this book, being a bug get lost in a forest and it's all about them trying to find the way back home and finally they're back home and it's it's a lovely thing to see because <laughs> uh, they, they get helped by this very tall tree man and you can see his hands there, that's, that's his hand, he carries them back home. I started this book in at the end of March so it's taken me two months to make this book which is quite a long time but I actually started the beginning of this project at the start of February I think so this whole project has taken me a very long time how many months is that January February March April May June it's taken me five months to make this thing into reality so it's it's a very good feeling being towards the end and I think I hate to say it guys I know it might break your heart but I think this might be the last video I make about being in bog because I basically finish it in this video I do the later on you'll see me do the front cover of the book and the back cover and I also do a few other bits and bobs here and there for the book I think this it's the end of being in bog guys but I actually think I'm gonna go back and redo a couple pages because I'm not 100% happy with some of them. Page page number two, three and four, oh, I, ugh, I just don't like them, they're yucky, yucky, yucky. So I think I'm gonna do, redo them, but I won't make a video on it. If you, I'll probably post it onto my Instagram, what I do do. So yeah, it's the end of an era. <laughs> Uh, what you're watching me do here is just some thumbnails for the page I'm going to be doing this in this video and it's just so I can get my ideas out, a bunch of different compositions and positions for all the characters to figure out which one I like best and I end up going for, I'm going to show it in a second, wait for it, it's going to come, this one right here, this is the one I ended up doing for the final piece, although I did move Bog round to the side so you can see his face a bit better because my main priority for this piece was to really like, emphasize their expressions and just to show how happy they were to be reunited so they've all got big cheesy grins like always I'm doing it in watercolor because watercolor just is, is my favorite thing and then of course I go over it in color pencil at the end so I wanted to keep this illustration quite simple and make, make the background to be mainly white and then on the page next to it I'm just going to have the text or the typography so all the attention is just drawn onto this little illustration and I thought by keeping it simple it's going to make sure that all the attention is just on the expressions and like the positions of the characters and I chose to do it in watercolour because I just enjoy doing watercolour more than digital if I'm being honest because like, for, for, throughout this book I've been doing a mix of digital pages and illustrations and um, traditional ones like this but to be truthful I really do enjoy the watercolour ones a lot more than the digital ones just because I find it more fun to be like hands on and you know not just be looking at a screen the whole time. Uh, plus the digital illustrations take me so much longer than the watercolour ones I've spoken about before but it's because the back button is a thing which exists so I just reach all the same line again and again and again and again until it's perfect but when I'm doing watercolour I get one try and that's it even if it's not the best I just go with it. You barely see granny and granddad throughout the book they're just on, they're on the first page but like they're really in the distance so you can barely see them and then you see them on the previous page but then this is, this is their time to shine, this is the, the, the first close up they get in the whole book, it's the first and the only close up that they get and I wanted to make them look older obviously by making them bigger but I wanted to also make them look a little bit 
little bit wrinkled and withered so I thought a cute idea to do that would be obviously they got quite a wrink wrinkly neck but I thought their mushroom I've made them like a little bit wrinkly their mushrooms because I thought maybe when a mushroom person gets older the little hat starts to deflate a little bit and um, it's not as bouncy as, as it once was so being a bog have very lovely round mushroom heads and then the grandparents are a bit bit deflated and wobbly but you know what it adds character I thought it makes them look even cuter so that's this illustration I'm pretty happy with it although if I was to do it again I would turn granddad to face the other way because I feel like bog's a bit left out beans getting all the attention and bog's just there at the side holding onto granddad's leg and I scan that in to the computer Whenever I scan things in on the computer, they never look as good as they look in real life. So we always have to tweak them a little bit. So you see me here adjusting the, um, what do you call it, the levels to make, to up the contrast a little bit. And then I also just drew over it to correct some bits and bobs. And then I also use the, what's it called? The tool which kind of looks like a plaster on Photoshop to get rid of all the little black speckles that appear on the, the picture whenever I scan it in. Like I said before, for the page next to this illustration, I was just going to fill it all with writing. I mean, it's quite a boring page, but I thought it'd be a nice end to just finish with a simple illustration. Because I couldn't leave it like that, of course I've got to decorate it with some leaves because that's what I've done for every single page. So I just colour picked the same colours from the illustration. The, the warm yellows and oranges for the leaves so they would match and I also thought I'd decorate it with some flowers for a bit of a change. Uh, moving on though, Wednesday there's still work to be done, uh, I've got to do a front cover. I was did look through all of the illustrations I've done for the book, hoping that one of them would be suitable for a front cover so I could just slap a title on it and be done. Uh, but then I thought, Emily, stop being lazy, you, you've worked so hard already you're not gonna you're not gonna let it all fall at the last hurdle with the with the with the cover because the cover the first things people say i mean they say don't judge a book by a cover but if the cover looks pooey who's gonna want to read the book you know all right so for the color palette of this piece i ended up just using the same Ooh. oh sorry i'm interrupting oh uh, doing my voiceover for my video oh. my mum's just walked into the room do you want to say hello hello ah. everybody do you want to do you want to tell yeah, please, please, everybody subscribe to this brilliant channel. Oh, shuck, she's making me blush, but you heard the woman, yeah, subscribe. Right, thank you. Okay, so I was saying before, uh, for the colour palette for this piece, I ended up just reusing the same colour palette I'd used for a previous page of this book because, oh, it just makes it life so much easier because just coming up with a nice colour palette is... I honestly find it so tricky, so to just be able to use one that I'd already done, it made this illustration a lot quicker because I could just go over and colour pick which colours I wanted to use and I, like, I didn't have to worry if they would work with like the rest of the colours or if it would all be a harmonious colour palette because I knew the colours worked because I'd already used them. You get me drift, you understand, you get what I'm talking about? Uh, uh, this was quite a quick illustration to do, it only took me it took me just one day, I think. Well, actually, it did take me two days, but like the first day was barely any time spent on it. To be able to do a digital illustration in one day, that's unheard of for me. Usually, they take me a good, a good three days. But I was quite happy to have this done so quickly. And it's because it was quite a simple composition and I already had the colour palette figured out. And I feel like I've gotten pretty quick at drawing trees now. I've drawn so many trees throughout all this book. But I feel like I've got I've got it down to quite a fine art doing these trees. I left the top part of this illustration quite empty uh, because I knew I was going to put the title there as well. So the, the top part of the illustration, not really much is going on, which did save quite a bit of time as well. Most of the detail is down here where Bean and Bog are because I wanted your eye to be drawn to them. So I put Bean and Bog smack bong in, smack bong, smack bang in the middle and I also like kind of frame them with flowers and leaves to like draw your eye into them. Uh, to make Bean and Bog a bit easier to do, what I do is I just colour them all in one colour first and then I use the select tool. I don't know if that's the correct name for it, but uh, it must be, yeah. It is a select tool. I, I select the area and then it just puts a, a line around them so you can colour them in without having to worry about going outside of the line. And that just makes things so much quicker. And it still does take me a while to draw them. Say, like, just to do Bean probably took me like an hour and then bog takes an hour because there's quite a lot of shading and detail which goes into them. I would love to make this book into like an actual physical book that you can hold rather than it all just being on the screen. 
because uh, my original plan was to just use the print room at college to make this like into an actual book but obviously that can't happen anymore so it's a bit tricky I'm not quite sure how to do it I've been looking online at some companies which make books but they're all really expensive so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do at the moment about it I mean but I know I will eventually make it into a book I might have to wait till I go to uni to use the print rooms there uh, so I don't know how long it will take I mean well the big dream would be to get this book like somehow published but I wouldn't even know how to begin to do that I don't have a scooby do about that so that's that's looking extremely unlikely uh, just to have it an actual book which I can hold would be lovely this bit right here when I was writing written and illustrated by Emily Schofield that was such a nice feeling to finally put my name on it and oh it was lovely that's the finished cover I'm really happy with it I ended up putting a little stripe down the side because I thought it looked nice I'll also put the same stripe on the back cover so the stripes will connect uh, and then this is an illustration from one of the pages in the book and I thought I could use that as the back cover just take the text off it and replace it with the the blurb which I'm going to add to this back page. I had a bit of struggle writing this blurb, I didn't really know what to do. I mean, when I've been writing this book, I've been just kind of winging it. I've been writing the book as I've done the pages. So I'll do a page and after I finish the page, I'll write it. And then I'll do another page and I'll write it, which is probably a weird way to do it. I imagine most people have the whole story written out and then do the illustrations for it. But for this, I've just kind of been winging it. That's the back cover. And right, so I wanted to add like a few in between pages before the story actually starts so I looked at a bunch of my old children's books from when I was a kid uh, to have a little look at what they did and I noticed that pretty much every book does have like a couple of like pages before the story actually starts so I wanted to do my own for this book just to make it look all professional and like a real like a real published children's book so I went looking through all my previous illustrations that I'd done for the book for like little cute I don't really know, little things that I could use as a pattern. So I found these little mushrooms which I used on one of the pages and I thought they would be ideal to decorate like an inside cover. So I came up with this idea of creating like a repeat pattern for the inside cover, a bunch of different mushrooms. So what I end up doing is drawing five different mushrooms and then a few couple leaves and flowers which I use to decorate the inside cover as a repeat pattern and then I also use the same pattern on the back cover. So you've got your front cover of the book, you open it up, you've got the repeat pattern on one side and then on the page next to that I wanted to do a little this book belongs to page because I just thought it'd be very cute. So like the little kid can write the name in the book and I just thought it was adorable. And then you've got all the pages of the book and then last page of the book you've got blank page and then another repeated pattern page and then the back cover of the book. Just uh, little bookends to make the book look a little bit more finished and more professional. For these mushrooms they are really simple because they are going to be really tiny in this repeat pattern. So I kept them quite simple, did a bunch of different variations, some red, some orange, some some short, some fat, some tall and long, some with like a little um, balcony area and there I am repeating them. What I ended up doing was swapping out some of the mushrooms to make sure it was like there was no non lining up next to each other so there wasn't too many of the same mushroom in the same clump making sure there was like a good spread of orange and red throughout the whole thing then in between I, I decorated it with flowers and some leaves to break up the mushrooms I thought it looked quite cute I also think the blue of the leaf added a bit a nice contrast so it wasn't all too red and orange and then that's that little this book belongs to page well it's been a long journey but the book's finally complete well actually I'm gonna go back and redo a couple pages but you know, that's not gonna be a video so this is the last uh, been a blog video if you've been following along with this series thank you very much for you know showing interest in everything that I'm doing it really does mean a lot I will be back next week I'm sure with a draw with me video something like that and um, yeah thanks for watching goodbye